Amen. God bless you. What a blessing to be back once again with you. Amen. I'm Pastor White with the Emmanuel Outreach Church Ministries here to give you another recap of our Sunday service on today. And once again, we had a powerful, powerful service on today. Wow. The glory cloud of Jesus came into the room and man, it filled the place. We really did. I want to thank all of you for joining with us today. Amen. And we thank uh, Jesus for all our Facebook friends and all the members of Emmanuel and many who are joining in with us today on this Sunday recap with Emmanuel Outreach Church Ministries. Now, we'll continue, our prayers will continue to go out for all of those who are sick, sick and they shut in, those who are seeking spiritual uh, advice and spiritual guidance. And I believe that our answer to all of our problems carnal and spiritual, is in the words of Jesus in the 66 books of the Bible. Amen? Jesus, who is God, he knows all things. He knows when we need it, and he knows how to administer it to us in a way that's healing to our souls and strength to our bodies. Amen? And with that said, we once again thank you for joining in. Today, today's recap, we want to talk about prayer praise and fight you know at my job they always they put much emphasis on ppe personal protection equipment but we're going to talk today about ppf prayer praise and fight now listen we want to go first of all to uh, in the book of second kings second kings chapter 20 verses number one through six let's look at that Second Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. And we're going to start there. And Second Kings chapter 20, verse 1 through 6. You know, the church is in, the, in a unique time in church history. Prayer is the effectual, fervent communication between you and your creator. You see, Jesus created all things. And for us to survive as Christians, for us to survive as saints of the Most High, then communicating with Jesus is essential. Talking to him is essential. I don't care what people say. I don't care what they think about it. But listen, you have a creator who created you, and he knows more about you than you'll ever know. And when we express our gratitude to him and our thankfulness to him, then it brings results. And we're going to talk about the uh, PPL, prayer, praise, and fight. First of all, point number one, your prayers will not go unanswered. Your prayers will be answered. Jesus said in his word that if we seek him and if we love him and keep his commandments, he will answer our prayer. In fact, he said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, and his name is Jesus, He's going to do it. In 1 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 20, look at this with me now. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 20. We'll begin with verse number 1. Your prayers will not go unanswered. Wow, listen to this. In those days was King Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, or you shall die and not live. I don't know what was going on in Hezekiah's life, but whatever it was, Jesus was not pleased with it. And the prophet, the prophet Hezekiah came to, and the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah and said, Listen, Hezekiah, you're a king, but I have a word from the Lord. He said, there are some things in your personal life that Jesus isn't pleased with. He said, get those things in order or you're going to die and not live. Those are some stern words. How would you feel if someone came to you and told you, Jesus told me, if you don't get your house in order, you're going to die and not live. You know, it, in our current state, we're going to say you are alive from the pits of hell. <laughs> I'm just being honest. But in this case, Hezekiah had a heart to please Jesus. He had a heart to 
to make God happy. Listen, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 2. He turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And Hezekiah took the words of <clears throat> took the words of uh, Isaiah. He turned to the wall. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He began to pray. Prayer will not go unanswered when they're sincere. Prayer will not go unanswered when you've taken the measure. To correct things in your life and give it over to Jesus. And Lord, I need some help with this sin. It may be a secret sin. It may be an open sin. It may be something that you uh, that you're struggling with. But here Hezekiah turns his face to the wall, and what did he do? He prayed. Wow. <clears throat> he prayed. <clears throat> I believe when the church prayed, things begin to happen. I believe that when the saints of God come together. And pray, sincere prayer, because the Bible says the fervent prayers of the righteous accomplish much, availeth much. When we pray from our heart and turn our face to the wall, oh, hallelujah, things begin to happen in our community. Things begin to happen in your marital relationship. Things begin to happen on your job because there are some things that we, that's out of our control, but nothing is out of Jesus' control. He can heal the sick. He raised the dead. He opened the blind eyes. He calmed the sea. He calmed the storm. Listen, prayer changes things and sincere, fervent prayer will never go unanswered. Wow, oh, hallelujah. Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and he began to pray. He said unto the Lord, he said, Lord, in verse 23, I beseech you, O Lord, remember how I have walked before thee in truth and in a perfect heart and have done all that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah, he weeped. He began to cry. Tears came down his face and his clothes became dripped with tears. Hezekiah was saying, Jesus, who is God, Lord, remember me remember when I had a mind to pray remember when I walked before you upright and listen the Bible says Jesus will not forget your labor of love he's not going to forget you he's going to remember you you're going to have some tough times but prayer is going to get you through Hezekiah turns his face to the wall he began to pray and he began to tell the Lord how that he walked before him in truth and with a perfect heart and he'd done that which is right in his sight and Hezekiah cried. Verse number 24. I mean, verse number 4. 2 Kings chapter 24. And it came to pass. After Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court. That the word of the Lord came to him saying. Jesus, our Lord, stopped Hezekiah in the middle of his track. And said, go and talk. I mean, he stopped, he stopped uh, Isaiah in the middle of his track. And said, go talk to Hezekiah. What has happened here? Jesus, our God, the Lord heard his prayer. It was sincere. Let's see what happened. And it came to pass after Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, thy father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, who is our Lord and God, he said, tell Hezekiah, I have heard his prayer and I see his tears. I have seen his tears. And behold, I will heal him. The Bible said, it's the Lord that healeth us. Jesus is a healer. And then the Bible says, on the third day, Thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Listen to this now. And we talk to Hezekiah. And I will add, verse 2 Kings 20, verse 6. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. PPE, first start with prayer. When Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, he wept. He didn't listen. This man, this king, who rules a kingdom out of humility and submission, turned his face to the wall. He cried, he wept, 
to his garment became soaking wet with tears. And Jesus heard God out with Jesus, heard his prayer, saw his tears, and watch this. He said, listen, Isaiah, go back and tell Hezekiah, I'm going to add 15 years to his life. Whoa. You see, when you pray sincere, and you mean it from your heart, your prayer will not go unanswered. This king's prayer was answered in 15 years. Now, now that tells me, no matter what he's going through, he can't die until 15 years expire. That's powerful. 15 years added to his life. That's prayer. Next is praise. Listen, praise is powerful. Never stop praising Jesus. Never stop praising him. Hezekiah has been healed. And of course, he's praising him. But now we have David. Point number two is never stop praising him. David was the king of Israel as well. He wrote a lot of the Psalms. He didn't write all the Psalms. He wrote a lot of the Psalms. David went through a horrible time in a portion of, a portion of his life. Remember, he fell with Bathsheba. He had Uriah killed. David was an embarrassment. He was actually an embarrassment to Israel. But there's something about David that got God's attention. David knew how to praise Jesus. So at the end of David's life, we come to Psalms 150. In Psalms 150, 1 through 6, look at what David does. David has written a whole lot of Psalms. He's killed a bear. He's killed a lion. He's killed Goliath. He's made mistakes. But notice here, David never stopped praising God. Listen, we must never, ever, as Christians and believers, take the praise and glory to ourselves. Oh, you know, some people, this is what I've done. Oh, I got this house. I got a, big, a nice job. Oh, I got a perfect family. I got my own business. Those things are great. But remember, your blessings, everything you have come from the Lord. All resources come from him. And if anyone should receive the praise, he should receive the praise. And David is saying here in Psalms 150, 151, he starts out in 151. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. When you come to church, the house of the Lord, lift your hands up and give God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. Praise him in the firmament of his power. If you don't have a church to go to and you're at home, sick at home, listen, heaven just throw your hands up and thank him for another day. Learn how to praise him. David goes on to say, praise him for his mighty acts. Wow. The things he's done for you. For You know, it's a blessing to wake up every morning with your health and strength. It's a blessing that some of us haven't, haven't attracted, this, haven't contracted this COVID disease. That's a blessing. You should praise Jesus for that. You should praise him for if you did have COVID and you overcame Without dying, you should praise him for that. He said, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to excellent greatness. Praise him because he's great. Praise him. You prayed now, but now it's time to praise. Praise him. Then he goes on even deeper. He said, there are instruments that has been created that we use to give Jesus praise with. Praise him with for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Psalms 105 and 3. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp, 150, 150 and four. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Listen, David is saying, I, I like this one. He said, praise him and dance. You know, sometimes I just feel like dancing. Jesus, I, when I look back over my life and where he brought me from, I just feel like dancing. Now, I'm not a dancer. And, and, by, by, far not, by your standards, I'm certainly not a, a dancer. But if I can just jump up and down sometimes and shovel my feet a little bit, you know, I get excited. That's because I'm saying, Lord, I thank you for bringing me out. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for bringing me out of a world of sin and shame. I thank you for washing me in your blood. I thank you for your mighty acts. I thank you for your goodness. That's what David is saying. He said, you can get so emotional and so excited and, 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 and so deep down, just, just, uh, bubbling inside the world, you may just want to dance. And if you dance, don't be ashamed to, because you're giving that dance and praise unto the Lord. He goes on to say, praise him up on the loud symbol, praise him on the high sounding symbol, and he ends this 
And Psalm 150 and 60 said that everything that had breath, praise you, Lord, you the Lord. That includes you. David is telling you, now that you've prayed and he, he answered your prayer, you should praise him for answering your prayer. If you can breathe, take a deep breath. Breathe out. If you can breathe, then you should praise him. Wow. It's a blessing to be able to breathe in this pandemic. That's the first thing that's cut off is your breath. So if you got breath, you should give them some praise. Hallelujah. Ooh, I'm just excited. Now, we talked about prayer. We talked about praise. Now, the final note, wrapping it up for today, we must never stop fighting the fight of faith. And I want to talk about that to you. Never stop fighting the fight of faith. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.12, 1 Timothy 6.12, that's a New Testament, New Covenant, fight the good fight of faith. Thy hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said, listen, this is a spiritual war, and you are to fight the devil. Satan is the enemy, and he's saying, don't you stop fighting. Fight the good fight of faith. We're going to move to another portion of scripture, which is Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 18. Listen, what I'm about to say, we must never stop fighting the fight of faith. Ephesians chapter 6 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. These are the evil days. And if you're going to remain a Christian, if you're going to remain a, a stable in Jesus, if you're going to remain in his love, then yes, Jesus will fight your battles, but there, are, there is a requirement. You also must have the tenacity and the desire to also fight. Oh yeah, what you mean? I'm not, we're not fighting people. Don't fight your brother. Don't fight on your wife. Don't fight on your children. Don't fight on your coworkers. No, you're fighting a spiritual battle. There's a real demon out there that hates you. And the reason why he hates you because you don't mind praying to Jesus and you don't mind praising Jesus. And because of those two elements, you become his enemy. And he's and he going to fight you night and day. He'll fight you in your dreams. He'll fight you and while you're awake. Satan has an agenda. And his agenda is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Therefore, we got to fight. Oh, yeah. And we we have something to fight with. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in this evil day and doing all you have to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins heard about you with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, take the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. There are so many people who are going to get their license to carry. Why are you getting your license to carry? So you can go and purchase a weapon to fight the adversary that may try to break into your home or may try to rob you on the street or may try to uh, violate you. So you go and purchase a weapon. That's on the natural kernel side. But on the spiritual side, there is a demon that wants to destroy your reputation he, want, he don't want you coming to church. He don't want you praising God. He don't want you giving Jesus glory. And he's coming to kill, to steal, and to destroy your life. But Jesus has given us some weaponry to fight with, and you ought to praise him right now. He said, listen, he said, you've got to take on the whole arm of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, so you can be able to ward off the fiery darts of the enemy. So when the devil shoots some fiery darts at you, you have been given some armor to fight the, 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 the fight off those darts. Hallelujah. And guess what? If, when you're praising him and when you're praying, the devil's going to shoot darts at you. But he's given you weapons of your warfare to fight the devil. And they're not coming. Listen to this. He says here, above all things, take the shield of faith. That's Ephesians 6.6. 6. Well, let's look at 6.15. 
Ephesians 6, 15. It says here, and your foot shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above, verse 6, 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He said the word of God is, you know, is a sword and the word of God cuts the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. That's why Paul told Timothy to study, to show yourself approved that a workman need not be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. How do, how do you fight the devil with these weapons? Listen, use Jesus' word. And I told them today, and we were praising them. The word of God is a sword, and it will cut any demon up that comes your way. Read the word. Study your Bible. Just don't take it home and put, put it on the shelf. Just don't take your Bible and put it in the seat of your car and let the sun kill it, eat it up. No, read that word. Absorb that word because you're going to need that word to fight the spiritual war. He said in 617, and I'm just about finished, take the heaven of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 618, pray in all ways with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. He said, at the end of the day, you start out praying, end up praying. Wow. P-P-F. Pray, praise, and fight. Emmanuel, don't stop fighting. Don't stop praying. And don't stop praising him. That's your victory. Today is a recap. And I know I run through this. There's so much more I want to say. But you are powerful today. Everyone who's listening to me this moment, you're powerful. I hear you praying. I see you praising him. But also you got to fight the enemy. Don't lay down. Let the enemy do you in, in any way. He just walk over you. No. The Holy Ghost give you power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come. What's that power for? The fight. This is a spiritual warfare. There are demonic spirits out there, and they want to pull you to the graves of hell. But you've got to tell Satan, tell that demon, and tell his nymphs, tell his helpers, they are a lie from the pits of hell, because greater is Jesus that's in me than he that is in the world, and you're going to win. Yes, you are. You're not going to lose. You're going to win, and you're going to fight until the Lord take you out of here. Somebody say glory. You know, listen, listen, listen. When you fight from your heart and you don't give up and you don't quit and it seems like you're losing, then the Bible says, I will put no more on you than you can bear. Jesus will step in and then he will fight when you're too weak to fight. He will fight for you. I love this. I love this. See, but you can't quit. Don't stop. When you think all your energy is gone and you've been exhorted of all your strength, the Bible says, I will come, Jesus' word will come to your rescue and Jesus will come in and fight your battle. Oh, yes, he will. And guess what? All you need to do is praise the name of the Lord because the battle is not yours. It's Jesus. It turns into Jesus when you're overwhelmed. Hallelujah. We can win today and you're going to win today because you're going to pray. You're going to praise and you're going to fight Emmanuel. We're on our way up. We're on our way out of here. Jesus is soon to come. And we're going to fight till our last breath. We're not going to give in. We're not going to sit down. We're not going to throw in the towel. And the reason why? Because the Bible tells us that he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. Remember, PPF, pray, praise, and fight. I've enjoyed this moment. Wow, I, I am, I'm really stirred up right now. Man, I am so stirred up. Brothers and sisters, I am so stirred up. Because when I look back on where he brought me from, all the prayers that I prayed, all the praises I gave unto him, and there were some battles that I lost to my flesh. But just like David, I repent it. I shall Lord restore me. Heal me. And when he healed me, I said, I'll never, through the grace and words of Jesus, allow myself to be defeated by a demon 
that has no power over me. Jesus is my helper. He's my strength. He's my buckler. He's my shield. And he will come to, he came to my rescue. He'll come to yours. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for joining in to this evening. And remember, we're going to be back this upcoming Sunday. And we're looking for you to join in with us as we do another recap of our Sunday service. And remember, hallelujah, Jesus loves you. And so do I. I'm Pastor White with the Emmanuel Outreach Church Ministries. And as, all, as I always say, you are blessed because Jesus said you are blessed. And remember, remember, pray, praise, and fight. Bless you in Jesus' name.